A lot of folks are afraid to deal with fish. They're afraid to cook fish or they've had bad fish before. The fish is so simple. It's one of those ingredients that if you work with it right, you can do it perfectly. I love fish. I love the opportunity to make fish. And I think a lot of people, if they just take the time to let the fish cook, let the fish kind of tell you what it wants to do, they'll be a lot better off in the kitchen. It's been my thoughts that people have never had bad fish. They've just had fish done bad or handled poorly. Also, developing stuff with pastas and, and making pasta dishes where you add fresh ingredients and all of a sudden the pasta comes alive with all kinds of flavor. It's one of those things that people get intimidated by, but it's very simple. And as I've said before, simple complexity, the ability to, to make a complex flavor out of simple spices is one way to really, really enhance your meal experience. Fish is one of those entrees that people are either really fond of or really afraid of. And my friend Lisa and I are going to put some fish together for you today. And Lisa's no stranger to the kitchen. She does a lot of baking. So she's been in the kitchen a lot, but I don't know, you know, the fish is kind of a different thing. We're going to do a nice panko crusted mahi-mahi. And what, what's cool about this is that the mixture that we're going to use to brush on it before it goes in the panko is actually made of apricot preserves and Dijon mustard. So I'm going to have you brush some of that on okay. there, Lisa. Okay. And all we've done is just taken equal parts uh, Dijon and equal parts uh, the apricot preserves. And you, wanna, you don't want to get the chunks of the preserves. You just want to kind of get the uh, liquid, you know, forms of it. Then and, then yeah, just chef brush chef. it on there nice. And then we're going to go right from there okay. into the panko. So nice once you, on Yeah. That. And what's going to happen is she's going to put this into the panko breadcrumb, and she's just going to give it a nice little firm uh, press. And what, what you're trying to do here is just get the panko to adhere to the fish. And why it's in there, just go ahead and brush the top of it okay. again. And that way you're ready to flip it over and go with the next, with the next round of it. Okay? So we're going to do a couple pieces. That should be just about enough. Okay. And just go ahead and flip it over. And it then nice we'll, and yeah, covered. just get, yeah, and it doesn't have to cover it completely. We just so want I that want to, to be, yeah, nice, nice and brown nice it up. Crunch. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's really what the panko is. The panko gives you a nice texture break. Okay, we'll move it over. And we've just put a little salt and pepper in it. And uh, basically, it's, it's basically going off the flavor of the Dijon and the flavor of the uh, uh, apricot preserves. Give it kind of a sweet and a heat type thing going on there. And then, of course, you've got the coarse black pepper in there, too. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and go ahead and stick those in uh, okay. on the grill or on the skillet there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do one more piece. Yeah, just into the oil. And all our oil is is we've just got some extra virgin olive oil. And what we put into it is a little bit of lime juice. And what we're going to do is we're just going to brown that. And then when we, when we get done and have it seared on both sides, we're going to throw it into the oven, 400 degree oven. And we're going to let it set in there. And it won't take long. One of the things I wanted to mention, Lisa, was that the filet comes out. This is an 8-ounce filet, okay? Okay. So what I did was re-filet it. So you got the filet that's about that thick. I just took a filet knife and went through it and cut it a little thinner. The reason being it will cook a lot faster. I was going to say, it's going to so be when, Yeah, so when you get it in there, it'll cook a lot faster. So this dish can be done pretty fast. That's and important you're, Absolutely, families. absolutely. And so when you've got guests coming over and you're wanting to entertain, you're able to uh, do the dish pretty quickly. Yeah. So we're going to come over here. Okay. And... Uh, you got, you got your uh, fish going in the oil, and, you know, about two tablespoons of oil will be more than sufficient, and you just want to leave it in there till it starts to brown, and you can kind of pick it up and check it. So now once we get the fish turned, we got, it starts to, the browning process, but you don't have to worry about it being all the way browned off on here because okay. you can go in the oven, okay. and it'll cook down a little bit further. So we're going to go ahead and take this, and we're going to stick it in the oven, and this is 400 degrees. It only take it about probably 10 minutes, 8 to 10 minutes in there, okay? And while we're working on that, while that's working, we're going to go ahead and start our pasta, okay? We're going to do a nice little artichoke pasta for this, okay? okay? First thing to do is get a little couple of tablespoons of, of olive oil, and then we're going to get some, a few shallots and some garlic. And I'm going to have you grab all the ingredients over there other than the parsley, <coughs> and we'll just set those right here. So what do we have here? This we've, got, nice. we've got some sun-dried tomatoes, we've got some artichoke hearts, and we've got some mushrooms and asparagus. So we're going to go ahead... And while these are browning up, we're going to go ahead and add the asparagus and add the mushrooms. Because this is kind of a reduction thing. It's going to cook itself down. So we're going to turn this up on high and really get it going well. And then it's going to cook itself down. We're going to add a little bit of uh, heavy cream. And we're going to also deglaze the pan with some white cooking wine. Okay? okay? You could use a Chardonnay. You could use a Zinfandel. You could use whatever you want as long as it's a white. Okay? And what that's going to do, the process of deglazing the plant pan is it takes all the flavor from the bottom and brings it all up into the sauce, okay? Okay.
put a little lemon juice in there. And one of the things with lemons, if you'll hold your finger there, you'll catch any of the seeds that come out. Put that in there, and we're going to do a little bit of salt and pepper. And you can see it's starting to saute off. And you really want to get a good saute going so that your, uh, so your vegetables get evenly coated with the salt and the pepper and the oil. Okay. And you're just going to give them a quick turn there. And then I'm going to go ahead and add this stuff now. And we've got the... We've got the, tell uh, us about the tomatoes. We've got the sun-dried tomatoes, which are basically your tomatoes that are basically uh, kind of had all the juice taken out of them. And they're just kind of, it's almost like a reduction of a tomato. And you, bring it, you keep all that natural flavor inside there. And then we've got the artichoke hearts that we've had, they're, they're already quartered, okay? It's all just going to come out. Yes. That tomato's so going to come out and really Exactly. Add You're going to get a lot of fresh flavors coming out of this dish because one of the things that, that works really well with this is the shallots and the garlic. All that bring flavor onto these items. And then, of course, the mushroom, it's like a sponge, so it's absorbing all oh, that yeah. stuff up in there. Nice. So. <coughs> okay. So you want to mix everything up, get it, toss it a couple times, get it really well. And then we're going to take the, the white wine, and we're going to deglaze the pan. And one of the secrets to deglazing, again, we're pulling everything up from okay. the bottom, is to go around the outside, and it pulls everything to the middle. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. And we're going to let that go just a little bit. And we want to reduce this down to about a half, Okay. So after it cooks just a little bit, we're going to take a little bit of heavy cream. Just a little bit, not a whole lot. Okay? We're going to mix that all together. See how it starts to thicken a little bit? Okay? Now what we're going to do is after this cooks down just a little bit further, we're going to add a little bit of butter to it. Okay? And the butter kind of finishes it off, gives it a nice glaze, and it also kind of brings it all together. Okay? And uh, this is actually a butter blend from Golden Harvest. It's a, it's a nice blend because it's not all pure butter. But uh, it's, got a, it's, a, it's called a European blend. It's got a real nice uh, butter and a margarine blend in there. So we're just going to put that in there. And see how this cooks. Oh, yeah, it's nice and yeah. thicken up and be nice and creamy. There you go. So the last thing we're going to do, and uh, this is one of the things you always want to do when you're working with pasta. You want to bring it down, and then I'm going to grab my pasta over here. And we're using a Barilla pasta. This is, a, this is a br br actually a Barilla angel hair pasta. And it's, it's, uh, this is a whole wheat, so you, this is a very nice pasta to use for this. You're just going to stick it in. It's one of the things you always want to remember when it comes to pasta. You always want to put the pasta into the sauce, not the sauce on top of the pasta. Okay? Because okay. yeah. what happens is, as you do this and you turn it, or even if you use a spatula, what happens is it coats all the noodles. So you get a real nice blend on there, and your pasta gets completely coated. Okay? So we're going to just let this cook down. And you can see how pretty this comes out. It comes out oh, really, really nice. Great. Yes, yes. And it, like I said, it's a real colorful, nice dish, okay? And we're going to go ahead and we're going to plate this, and then we'll pull our fish out. And we're going to make a real quick little lemon sauce for the fish, okay? What you want to do is you want to let this cook down just a little bit further, and you can kind of see how it's starting. See how it's starting to thicken up there, okay? Give it another little toss, and we'll go ahead and plate this, okay? Again, you got all the flavors oh, in there. Good. Yeah, you got all the nice. flavors, a lot of color. Sun-dried tomatoes. Sun-dried tomatoes, yeah. Those are awesome. We'll Hard to choke hearts on there. We'll just dip a little bit of the sauce on there. Okay. Then we'll go ahead and pull our fish out. And you can see that it's, uh, it's come out real nice. It's a nice golden brown. Yeah. Crunchy texture. Yeah. Nice it's texture. Tear there. Up nice. We'll get rid of this, and then we're going to make us a quick little a little sauce here. Okay. So we've got the fish stuff that was kind of left in there. Put a little bit of white wine. Okay. So you get that flavor from the. Yeah, fish we're, we're in taking there. the fish flavor back up out of there. Grab a couple of the lemons. And you really, again, this is not something that's a. It's a huge, heavy sauce. It's just something more or less to uh, go over the fish and give it a nice little flavor. And uh, the biggest thing is you're trying to get the, uh, you're trying to get the uh, flavor of the fish that cooked in the pan right. back into there. So same principle. Take a little bit of butter. We're going to stick it in there and melt that down. And then the last thing we're going to do is we're going to hit it with a little bit of fresh parsley. A little color. We'll just let that cook down. We'll go right over the top of the fish with this, and it'll really, it'll really do a nice job of uh, giving the fish a real nice lemony flavor. And it's real simple to make. Again, it's one of those things that when you make it, you don't have to put a lot of effort into the, 
the, the pan's really right. seasoning everything, okay? Doing so all we're, the work we're gonna let that reduce down. One thing I'm gonna add to this is we're gonna put just a little bit of red pepper flakes in. It yeah. Up. And we can, you can actually put the red pepper flakes into the uh, pasta if you want to. Mm -hmm. So that's another option you have with that. Okay. Now could you put we'll it in the panko? You yeah, you could do that as well. Nice you bet. Too, you bet. Okay, so now you're just going to go over the top with this. And you just have a real nice light lemon sauce over the top of the fish. Okay? And again, you have a lot of you have a lot of nice flavors working nice in colors, here. Textures. Nice colors and it, it's just a real easy great way to make fish. And the good thing about it is, is for those people that really don't like fish, it gives you a good opportunity to do something easy with it. So. I mean, that didn't take any time. There you go. It? We did it all quick, didn't we? I mean, anybody can do this. That's right. So the opportunity to get together with people and not only use the, the kitchen as a place to cook, but a place to communicate and spend time together is a very important thing. You know, if you think about your fondest memories, I can almost guarantee you they came around the table because this is where we take the time to slow down and enjoy each other's company. Food is such a wonderful thing, it's, it's a necessity. But sometimes I think we put the food and, and the fast pace of our lives way ahead of what we should, which is each other and the company and the memories that we make together. 